Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to show you how you can create first-person animations using Control Rig right inside Unreal Engine 5. Control Rig is a very powerful tool that will allow you to create any animation that you'd like for your characters. And we will focus on creating first-person animations, whether that be for a first-person shooter, survival game, you will learn how easy it is to, to animate and export your animations so that they can be game ready. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Now before we start off the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon sponsors. Patreon is a great way to support all the free content that I produce here on the channel. And you can also get some of the completed projects as a download up on my Patreon. And again, thank you to my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. So the very first thing that you want to do is create a blank project. You want to create a games. Under the games tab, we're going to select the third person character. Uh, because the third person character comes with a character that has all of the control rig controls already set up. So we're just going to leave the settings as this, and then I'll just name this to first person shooter anim animations and create the project. All right, once we're in here, we can go ahead and go into our content drawer here. I'm just gonna dock this in layout. But if you head over to the characters under the content folder, have this mannequins folder and inside of there we have this folder for rigs so this has all the control rigs already set up for the mannequin character so we're going to give it a second here to load and once that's done loading I'm going to take this control rig mannequin underscore body and just drag and drop it into our level and what that actually did is it created a brand new sequence with our control rig right here and it added this timeline that we can actually start animating so if you don't know anything about control rig and animations you don't really have to worry I'll explain this to the best of my ability alright and I'll take a second here to explain everything so down here is your sequencer so if you don't know what a sequence is it's basically what you'd use to create either cinematics uh, animations, any sort of movement inside of your level project. Uh, you're going to use this timeline, the sequencer timeline, to keyframe certain events or certain movements. In our case, we want to keyframe when we move part of the character's arms and part of the controls. We want to keyframe it here on this timeline. Now, there's two different ways that you can create the sequence. As you saw, we can just drag and drop this control rig mannequin body and it will automatically create that. Another way is you can click this little uh, sequence icon at the top and just click add a level sequence. Once you have done that, for example, if I were to delete this mannequin body, all you'd have to do is once you've created your sequence, you would just have to drag in your control rig here and it will add to that sequence. Another way you can do that is if you go to your outliner, you can select your control rig and drag it onto your sequence. So there's a couple different ways that you can uh, get your character here onto the sequence. Anyways, now that we've uh, talked about that, let's actually talk about how to set up this character to start animating and creating a first person animation. So the very first thing that we wanna do is we wanna add a camera to our character's head here. That way we can see what it's like in the first person and we can preview the animation. So I'm gonna to go to the cube plus icon and create a all classes and over here, just search for a camera. And we're gonna take this camera actor, drag and drop it in the scene. And then all we have to do is take this camera actor and drag and drop this onto our CR underscore mannequin. Now it's going to pop down here to ask us to choose a socket or bone. And we want to attach the camera to the head, so just click the head. And now the camera is attached to the head. 
So we want to go in the details panel here. And if I expand this, we want to reset the location. And all we have to do is click E and rotate this 90 degrees. Okay. So we now have the camera attached to the head. And what we want to do next is we want to actually preview what this camera is seeing. So one way I'm going to do that is if you head over to this three lines button here at the top of your viewport, we can go down to layouts here and we're going to change this to from, from the one pane to the two pane. Okay. So now we can zoom in over here. And on this other pane, we're going to change this from the top view all the way down to this placed camera, camera actor. Okay, so right now what we're seeing is what this camera is seeing right here. Okay, you can switch between your main view and your first person camera by just clicking this uh, button here at the top right. But right now that should be good for now. One thing to note is that if you scroll in this viewport, it will move the camera. So I'm not sure if there's a way to lock this specific viewport. Um, if there is a way, comment down below. But just note, if you're scrolling in here, uh, just make sure that you reset your view back to normal. Okay. All right. So now we should be able to start animating or creating a first person animation. So if we take part of the hand here, take some of these controls, you'll notice we can move it up and down. We can start to rotate the arm around. Okay. Now what I actually want to do is I want to switch the current controls from what it currently has. Right now it is set to FK. So FK basically means that we can only rotate, we can only rotate each bones. Okay. Which, you know, you might want to use for certain certain things but in my case I want to switch this to IK so I want to switch it to the IK control that way it will be a lot easier to actually animate our characters first person arms so to switch from FK to IK you want to go over to your sequence and expand here the control ring mannequin body under the global control here if you expand that we have some checkboxes down here. So these checkboxes allow us to switch from FK to IK in the arms. So we'll go ahead and click both of these checkboxes right here. And you'll see here in the viewport, we now have these boxes on the character's hands that we can select. And now if we move the arm around, or if we move the hand around, you can see that the arm moves with the hands motions okay so this is what's called IK and this will help us a lot when animating because then we don't have to rotate each part of the arm to animate it now a couple more settings before we go ahead and create an animation first thing that you can do is you can disable grid snapping so you get a more smoother movement when animating you can also disable rotation snapping so when you rotate get more smoother rotation. If you click this uh, arrow icon here, we're going to change the camera speed down to one. So that will make our lives a lot easier when navigating in this viewport rather than um, having to deal with fast camera speed. And so now if we take part of our character's arms here and rotate it around, we can start to animate our character's hands. Now, one thing I forgot to do is we want to actually change this from real time off to real time on. Okay. That way we can actually see what we're doing. So we can take our character's hand right here. We can also take the elbow here and move it up. And we can sort of position our character's hand like so. I'm just moving both of the character's arms by selecting the controls and moving them around, rotating them. And what I'm basically trying to accomplish here is just to get our character's hands in front of the screen. 
that way we can start to work start working on a first person animation okay so you can take the elbow controls here and move them out and we can take these hand controls and rotate them and position them like so now if at any point you want to hide the controls if you head over to this animation tab and under the animation settings we can see we have some checkboxes here so if we want to hide the controls all we have to do is click this hide control shapes and then we can see what our first person view would look like without any of the controls another uh, neat button inside of here is to only select control rate controls so this setting right here will make sure that we don't select anything else in the world that way we only select the control rate controls so that way we don't select a cube or something other than our character's control rig. So that will make animating a lot easier. So now that we've have sort of like this base pose, let's actually start uh, working on creating maybe sort of an idle animation. Okay. So down here in our sequencer, you can scroll up and down here and we're going to start adding keyframes to create a very basic animation. So with our current control selected, our hand control here, if we if we scroll down, we're going to see the current control that we have selected. In this case, our hand left IK control. And there are two different ways you can add a keyframe. You can click this little circle icon right here. That will add a keyframe. You can also uh, click this keyframe icon right here. And what this will do is it will automatically create a keyframe whenever you make any sort of movement or changes. So for example, I'm going to keyframe this hand R. Okay, and our hand left hand control. So both of these controls are currently keyframed. I'm going to move this timeline over to maybe about 20 seconds and then if you take the control and move it around you can see that it automatically creates a keyframe so whenever you modify or move around a control if you have this key icon selected it will automatically add a keyframe for whenever you move a control around so this is really handy that way if you forget to click this little circle icon whenever you modify the control it will automatically keyframe it for you so we currently just added a little bit of an animation there you can see we moved we keyframed the initial pose of our hands right here and then about 20 seconds in all I did was move the hands down took these controls moved them down and then ha made sure that I marked those keyframes, one for the right hand and one for the left hand. Okay, so what we have here is basically really simple hands moving down. Now what I'm going to do is you can actually select keyframes and copy them. So I'm going to left click and drag and select both the left hand and the right hand keyframe at frame zero control C then if we move this over to say about 40 seconds control V you can paste that frame so right now we have a very simple idle animation so you can see we go from our initial pose our hands move down and they move back up now this is probably a bit too fast so what we can do is we can select these keys and you can click on them and move them like so. Okay, so I'm going to move these center keys to the middle. And I'm going to move these to 
about the end like so. Now if we hit spacebar or play, see that our character has this very simple idle animation. And maybe I want to space this out a little bit more. Move that to about the center. And then we're going to take these frames and move it to the very end like so. So if we hit play, we have this very basic idle animation. And of course, if you want to hide the controls, you can click the hide control shapes. You can see what it looks like here in the first person. Now you might notice that the arms kind of look weird from the third person. And it's really up to you how you animate or position the arms. Um, it really it depends on your game, whether or not you're actually going to have like a third person in your game, or if it's just fir first person. If it is just first person, you really only have to animate the arms. In fact, what you could do is you could just delete the rest of the mesh, other than just the arms. But like I said, it's up to how you want your game designed, um, if it's multiplayer and whatnot. So right now, I think this is a pretty good animation, pretty good idle animation. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and export this animation so that we can use it in our animation blueprint as well as our animation blend space. So let's go ahead and if you scroll to the very top here, if you select your control rig mannequin body, uh, we can right click and we have this menu that pops up. What we want to do is you want to bake animation sequence, okay? So click bake animation sequence. And now it's going to ask for a location to bake that animation to. And I'm just going to select my content folder. And we can just rename this to idle animation. Click OK. And then if you expand this export, you have some settings here. I'm going to leave all the settings as a default and just click export to animation. Now you can see it was completed. So we go in our content drawer. We have here this idle animation. And it will pop open the window of our idle animation. Okay. So if we were to go into first person here, uh, you can see the hands here animating. And of course, this isn't the greatest example because our character's head's in the way. So what you'd want to do is you want to go ahead and take the mesh that you're using into Blender and just delete everything other than the arms. But as you can see, if you were to go into first person here, we have just a very basic, very basic idle animation that you can use. You can retarget for your different character models and you can use to set up a first person character. So I hope this is a decent amount of information to get you started on creating your own first person animations for your games. I will likely make a follow up tutorial detailing how to do more advanced things such as animate say your character holding a rifle as well as setting up the rifle so that you can actually animate things like reloading the clip. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Also check out my Patreon, link in the description below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.